If you have your Klatz notes, you'll be able to follow along with my outline of things that we're going to highlight, and I encourage you to do that. Even before you listen, download the documents so you have those in front of you, and it will help your Bible study. There are three things initially that I want to point out concerning this passage, but before I do, I want you to investigate the passage, and I want to ask the question, what stood out to you in this passage? Go through and mark the things. If you have question marks, maybe in a pencil, put a question mark next to the verse and write down the question. You can email that in to me. My email address is on the website and you can email me that. If you're on Facebook, you can befriend me on Facebook and then you can text me. You can message me on Facebook and I'll answer those questions as well as I can. But some of those things that uh, I noted that were highlighted to me were the things that were repetitious. I'll mention those just briefly here. Why would Pharaoh listen to me? That's something that's really bothering Moses. Why would Pharaoh listen to me? Uh, and then God emphasizing over and over three times in the passage, he said, this is the same Aaron and Moses who, and he gives a whole genealogy and everything. And then my mighty hand, very important and I am the Lord very important and I will do these things what God is doing is bringing comfort to Moses he's not criticizing and condemning him because he failed first thing I want to note is that Moses had two failures and he's dealing with these and he's very depressed he's not just discouraged he is depressed and we'll see throughout his life he often gets depressed because it's a big job that he has before him and it's hard to work with people that are uncooperative now the first thing is Moses' two failures. Do you remember what they were? Two failures. Number one, he failed to circumcise his son. Remember that? Gershom was not circumcised and God was angry and said, I can't use you unless you're gonna obey everything that I said. And so his wife circumcised the son and she got mad and you know, that whole story. And the second failure is in the very next chapter, chapter five. He failed to do what the Lord told him to do. God said it over and over. Do exactly what I tell you to do. I put my words in your mouth and you speak my words. He goes right into Pharaoh and speaks his own words. Makes some things up as he's going. And he does not do the miracles with the staff and with the leprous hand going into his cloak. And so Moses had two failures. And when you fail, you tend to get discouraged. And if you think about it very long, you get depressed. Because depression is anger and anger that's suppressed and put down in your heart and you pretend. Thank God that Moses was honest and said, God, I'm discouraged and who wants to listen to me? I'm nothing. And that's exactly where God wanted him. God wanted Moses to realize that he was nothing. And then we have the genealogy. Uh, if you want to wade through that, it is the genealogy of three of the tribes, briefly, to lead us to the tribe of Levi, which becomes the Levites, or the priestly clan. And Moses and Aaron are both of the priestly clan. God was establishing here, this is the same Moses and Aaron that went before Pharaoh. This is the same Moses that led the people out of Egypt. This is the same Moses and Aaron. God repeating it because he wanted to emphasize two things. Number one, they were called of God. Number two, they were destined by God to be of the house of Levi that gave them their credentials. It's very significant in Hebrews chapter five and verse four, it says this, no man takes this priesthood unto himself except he who is called of God. And that would really be helpful later on when Moses needs to defend his leadership before the people. The third thing I would highlight here, and you can see it on the screen here, and if you need to enlarge that, I do have the PowerPoints on our website, and you can download the whole thing and see it very clearly. The third thing is Moses' depression. I don't want to underemphasize that. This guy was depressed. He was down in the dumps. He felt like a failure. He didn't want to do this in the first place, and he's still believing that God failed him. And so as we come into chapter 6, this is the context. God failed me. And now God takes the, the, uh, the steering wheel and says, Moses, this is not about you. This is not about your skill, not about your ability, not about your failures and your successes. It's about me. I am going to show Pharaoh who I am. I am going to show the Egyptians who I am. And I'm going to show you and the Israelites who I am. I am the Lord. Uh, there are three things that, in God's perspective, God is communicating here, and that is very important for us. The first thing is what I've mentioned in the reading. God says, my mighty hand and outstretched arms, 
I will do this task. I will deliver you from the Egyptians with a mighty hand and outstretched arms. One of the things I like to do when I read the Bible is when I see a thing that is being repeated, I go to my concordance, and I have an online concordance, and you can get one through the internet and do it online, uh, is to do a word search of that particular expression. I use a NIV Bible for my study, but I always use the King James to do my word searches because it's closer to the original, and I have a I have a software package that helps me see the words that are behind there. So do a search of that, and in your notes, I have given you the, the notes for that so you would know what it is and be able to follow along. Uh, in your notes, I give you an extended list of all of the things that came out of my outstretched hand, my, my mighty arm and my outstretched hand. Here's an exercise we did with our class as we met on Thursday night. I had us read alternately that whole second page and on into the third page of all the repetitions that God used to say the same thing throughout the book of Exodus and Deuteronomy and Numbers. It is astounding. And as we were reading it, somebody stopped and said, wait a minute, in the middle of this, my heart is stirred because you're saying it out loud. And pastor, you're making us say it loudly. Great power and mighty hand and you're emphasizing it. As I go through, I never noticed it before. God is saying, I am the mighty God. I am going to deliver you. I'm going to make sure that they know there is one God and only one God. And I thought, that's great because that's exactly what happened when I read the passage. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You are building your faith as you read the passages. So read them. When you take your notes, take the time to go into a quiet place and put yourself in a closet where nobody can hear you and read these scriptures out loud. I've underlined the things that you should read loudly and watch what happens to your faith. You'll start to see that faith is growing in your own heart as you realize these things are so. It's so important to realize that God says with my mighty hand and outstretched arm I am going to deliver you because God wants to do that for every one of us not just the Israelites he is the same yesterday today and forever and he still wants to deliver us you and me today in our situations where we get down in the dumps and we get discouraged God says I want to encourage you that I am still the mighty God I am still the absolute I am still able to do what I did in the past remember that scripture in Hebrews it says he is the same yesterday today and forever that means today he's the same as he was back then and he still hears the cry of his people. Listen to this passage. It's from 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect or pure before him. God says, I'm looking for people throughout the whole earth, not just in Israel's time, not just in Moses' time, but right now, today, I'm still looking throughout the whole earth, looking for people whose hearts are pure and honest and simple before me, who trust me, and I want to show myself strong on their behalf. That's a wonderful promise. And remember, remember David, David, that little shepherd boy, a uh, ruddy little boy that goes before uh, Goliath. And what does he say? He he doesn't say, I come to you because I'm a strong kid and I'm a tough guy. No, he says, uh, you come to me with a sword and spear and a shield, and I come to you in the name of the Lord God of hosts and the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. And he goes right in and he says that this whole assembly might know that the Lord saves, not with a sword or spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. That is a promise for all of us. What a wonderful promise. Now there's a second thing I want to point out here and it's going to take you some time to do a homework assignment on this and that is when the Lord says, I am the Lord. Now right now, if I'm preaching in church, I'm going to say, I want everybody to say that out loud. I am the Lord. And everybody's going to say, I am the Lord. That's not how you say it. That's not how it's supposed to be read. It's supposed to be read dramatically. So the Lord says, I am the Lord. It is, I am the Lord. And maybe you don't have a voice like mine that is deep and, and resonant, but you can say it in a voice. If you're a woman, you can say, I am the Lord. 
But you need to emphasize, God is saying this, and he's saying it with power and with authority, and there's something behind it. Now, I've given you in your, in your notebook a, uh, a package of papers that is the study of I am the Lord, all the passages that say this all through the scriptures. And there's about eight pages of it printed in small print so that you might read through that and realize the Lord says, I am the Lord. I am the mighty God. There is no other God besides me. Trust me. That is so important. And it's important that you read it. it won't do you any good just to think about what Pastor Dick said. Pastor Dick does not give you faith. The Word of God gives you faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So read through that passage and watch what happens. As I read through them, oh, my faith was stimulated. It was encouraged. It was enlarged. And I began to believe the Lord. God, you still want to do that today. You are still the same today that you were back then. 16 times in Exodus, 45 times in Leviticus, 12 times in Isaiah and 67 times in Ezekiel and then there are many other passages that I did not count they are scattered throughout the Old Testament so I want you to be sure to read that so I have this document I'd like you to read I want to encourage you also to read the Bible and so I have included in your downloads a uh, a Bible reading schedule for the whole year and I don't think you have to read the Bible through every year but many people get lost, so I have suggested you don't read it chronologically and go through because you'll get lost in Leviticus and then you'll give it up. So I encourage you to read it in different ways and I've created this in packets so that you can see different topics and over a period of month you're reading those topics and that's helpful for you. The third and last thing I want to point out is the I wills that God has placed in this passage very important that we see the I wills. There are eight I am's that God says in this passage we've read and many others throughout the scriptures. But now as we come to I will, God is saying, Moses, it's not about you. It's about my promises. It's about my mighty hand and it's about my mighty name and who I am and it's about my mighty promises. And I have promised and I will perform. I am God and I don't lie. It's impossible for me to lie. And so if you look in your notes, you'll see that God says, I will, uh, seven times in chapter 6 and four times in chapter 7. That's 11 times. God has repeated this over and over. That's why it's important for you to mark it in your Bibles. God is saying to you, Dick LaFountain, I will do this for you. Israelites, I will do this for you. God has planted in his word many I wills that we would know that he does not lie, he does not fail. His promises are yes and amen in Christ throughout all ages. And you'll find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse 20, that his promises are yes and amen to you and to me in Christ throughout all time. They never fail. It doesn't mean you're going to get the promise immediately when you pray. It doesn't mean that it's uh, going to come exactly the way you, you want it to or you expect it to. God is the God of the unexpected. We're going to see that all through Exodus. He does things in unusual ways that he might receive the glory. We have also in your packet a list of all the promises of God to Israel and specifically the land of Israel from the Nile all the way to the Euphrates that God says I'm going to give to you through the promise to Abraham. And in Jeremiah 33 God affirms that covenant that even day and night would cease to be before God will fail to fulfill his promises to Israel. And you say, well, I'm not a Jew, so it doesn't apply to me. Well, it does apply to you. It applies to you in, in two senses. Number one, God says, I will not fail to fulfill my promise for Israel. There are people today teaching that Israel is not the people of God, that we are the people of God. They've failed, so they're out of it. We're in it. No, that's not scripture. Read Romans chapter 9. Uh, chapter 9 through 11, you will find out that Paul says, no, we are grafted into Israel. Israel is not cut off. She's put on hold until God completes that work in the end times. Uh, so that's very important. And then we have another list of I wills, and I've gone through the scriptures to highlight these. And I want to bring them to you right now so that you will see this is very practical. It's not just to Moses, it's to you and me. When you are discouraged, God has promises for you. Here's some I will promises in the book of Isaiah. And I have them here, and I won't, I won't bother you with all the text. It's in your notes. Pick them up. 
Isaiah 41.10, I will be with you. I will answer you. I will help you. I will hold you. I will hold your hand. I will walk with you through the fire. I will make a way in the desert. I will blot out your transgressions. I will pour water on the thirsty. I will give treasures of, uh, of snow. I will carry you. I will do all I please. I will answer you. I will not forget you. I will contend for you. I will give you beauty for ashes and I will act on your behalf. Isn't that a wonderful thing that God has promised to you and to me that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he wills to do his promises in our lives. But it depends on our faith. That's why he was giving this chapter uh, to Moses giving his, this experience to Moses to bolster his faith, get him into the Word of God, get him in looking at the Lord instead of at himself. And then in Jeremiah, there's several more. I will answer you. I will heal you. I will forgive you. I will restore you. I will fulfill my promise to you. I will be your righteousness and I will prosper you. Those are wonderful promises that the Lord has given to all of us. Let me close with one scripture, and it's in your notes, and I failed to zip along in these notes, uh, uh, but you have them before you. I, I want you to know that the Lord says that He wants to do these things. My purpose will stand, and I will do all I please. What I have said, that I will bring about, and what I have planned, that I will do. I love that. That's from Isaiah 46, verses 10 to 11. And I'll remind you that the Lord says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a bright hope. May the Lord encourage your faith as you study the Word of God together with us. God bless. Have a wonderful day. I want to encourage you to pick up the documents that are on the website. They are very important and they encourage your faith and your walk with God. And finally, I want to encourage you to go to the website and get familiar with all the studies that we've done. We have done Jonah, we've done Philemon, and now we're doing Exodus. And I trust that it will be a blessing for you. God bless you. In Jesus' name.